Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some cool Power BI updates for you this week. Also, I just hope everyone's staying safe with all the craziness going on in the world today. So take care of yourselves. I also want to give a huge shout out to all of the members of the Guy in a Cube YouTube channel. If you're not familiar with that, there's a join button down below that you can click on and talks about the perks that come with that. But thank you so much for helping to support what we do here on the channel. It really makes a difference. And with that, let's dig in. David Eldersfeld's got a blog post looking at buttons inside of Power BI Desktop and really talking about that it goes beyond the icons that are used for those buttons. Some folks may look at those and think, well, well, that's all they're used for, so I can have a bookmark button and that's what controls using bookmarks. But the real answer is that every button has its own set of action types and David walks through what those items are and how you can really take advantage of those in your report and really setting up even your own custom buttons if you want. We've talked about that with some of the videos that we've done here on Guy in a Cube and the blank button I think is probably the most powerful button of them all and really allows you to come up with some creative ways that you can improve the usability of your report. So definitely check out this blog post if you're curious about how you can really use buttons to their full potential. Links down below. Continuing that button train, Laura Graham Brown's got a blog post looking at how do you reset slicers using a button? And the magic here is really when using bookmarks. So you can get the slicer set up the way you want as your default set save that bookmark, and then from a button perspective, switch between those bookmarks or take you back to that starting point of where you want it to be. This is really a great example of how you can use the combination of buttons along with bookmarks to really create that application-like experience inside of your reports. Laura's also got a video that walks through how to do this, so check out that video. I've got a link up above and take a look at how you can accomplish this also take a look at the blog post itself. Links down below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. The Power BI blog's got a post talking about the new, improved, revamped search experience inside of the Power BI service. So on the home page, you had a search box that you could use. This was a global search across workspaces, reports, dashboards, apps, and the problem with this was it was only on the home page. And so if you were in a report or you were in an app, you had to go back to that home page to perform the search. So it wasn't very convenient. And what they've done, and you may have already seen this in the service itself, is that they've moved that search box from the home page up to the top bar of Power BI. So now, regardless of where you are in your Power BI experience, that search box is available to you. They've also created a result list as part of this. So when you do that search, you'll get that nice, easy result list that you can actually pick which piece of content you're after. The other nice thing too, is if you just click on that search box, it's just gonna give you the most recent items. So that's kind of a nice ad. So go ahead, go back to the Power BI service and check out the new search experience. There's a blog post out on the Power BI blog detailing the new improvements to the Power BI mobile app. So a lot of these focused around two separate areas. One was the new interaction settings. And so for example, you can choose whether or not the report footer, whether you want that docked or to automatically hide based on what you're doing. There were other options as well as part of this. The other item is the ability to multi-select items within a visual, which is really nice if you're trying to select two different items within a given visual. The blog also comments that administrators can, for those interaction settings, can set a global setting for those if they're doing using like Intune to manage mobile devices. So that's something that's available for organizations as well. Pretty neat improvements. Make sure you've updated to the latest mobile app and check out the blog post for all the details. Seems like just yesterday we just got a Power BI desktop update, but the March 2020 Power BI desktop update is available for you to go use. And this release had some pretty cool things inside of it. The first one I'm gonna call out is that may come as a shock to some of you if you're opening up Power BI Desktop, the March build for the first time. If you didn't select the preview feature for the new ribbon experience and you're not used to that experience, it is now on by default. 
So with the March build, when you go and install that, you're going to get that new ribbon experience whether you wanted it or not. So be aware of that. May come as a shock factor to some of you. Hopefully a lot of you were already using it. Some other things that I liked, the buttons got two new action types. So one is for navigation experience. So we can just do navigation directly from the button. Before the way you kind of handled this was through the use of bookmarks. And so if you just wanted to do a page navigation from one page to another, you had to go actually set up a bookmark that saved that page location direction and then set up a bookmark action for the button. Now you can just do it with the navigation action type. So it clears up some of those bookmarks that you may have. So make sure you go clean those up if you can now use the buttons for navigations. The other is this drill through experience. And so sometimes if you've had a visual that used a drill through type activity, some folks may not realize that they can just right click and do the drill through. So now you can have a button there to help educate people that there is drill through capabilities. You can also set the text of that button to be based off of a dynamic measure. So that way you can say, hey, drill through to details of this item, right? And that would just help users use the report more efficiently. Multi-column sort is now available for tables and also the filter pane got a search experience too, which goes off of the actual name of the filter. But if you've got a lot of filters in there, you can easily search through to figure out which one it is that you wanna go update, which is really nice. A lot more updates. Be sure you check out the Power BI blog that details all the items as well as an embedded video, which you'll see up above as well. To get all the details, also make sure that you're updated to the latest build. If you're on the Microsoft Store, then you should hopefully just have gotten the update automatically. Otherwise, you'll have to get the MSI package to install that. All right, I wanna hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know down in the comments below. I wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.